I'm glad it's night, so the light from the sun would not burn me on my bum when I shoot the moon. Hill's got a tribute into the ground with a pulverizing tackle from Ambrose. Oh, I think the bombers are going to go over there. Bombers and one. Baby, you've been rolling solo. Time to get down with the team. The greatest. Welcome to the Windy Hill Windsock with me, The Solution, and joining me today is Fiona. Hello. What's happening? Not a lot, not a lot. What about not you? Lot. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Uh, it's been an interesting week. It, uh, it's fucking freezing today, by the way. It was cold. It's like a, it is like a I'll, northern hemisphere winter. It was, it was a great day to get myself locked out of my apartment, wasn't it? It wasn't the Jehovah's Witness lady that um, no, it wasn't. locked you out. <laughs> it wasn't. But I absolutely 100% got myself locked out of my apartment today, which was fucking fabulous. So that rocked my day. As you know, the type of person I am, I organise my day to the nth degree. I'm a very organised person, and that really threw me. So what's the backup um, plan? Well, the backup plan, the way it happened was, as you know, my fridge died, so I had a new fridge delivered. Hmm. And as the guys were taking the old fridge, because part of the plan, they take the old one away. And he said to me, there's nothing it left. You took everything out, didn't you? And I, of course, said, because I'm, I organised and I prepare. And hmm. I said, absolutely, I did, because um, I prepared. And uh, as soon as he walked out the door, five minutes later, I had a light bulb moment. I thought, oh, I forgot there's a, a bowl of fruit that I left in in um, the fridge that I was waiting to take out at the last minute. And so what did I do? In my distress, I ran out of the apartment without the keys and locked myself out for a bowl ah, of fruit. Please tell me you got the bowl of fruit back. I did get the bowl of fruit. But then I was left sitting outside in the cold with my bowl of fruit because I locked my because I didn't have my fob to get back into the actual building. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting outside in four degrees had to wait for a stranger to walk past and mm. ask them to borrow the phone. And boys and girls, this is why you always remember somebody's number off by heart. Mm. And, and even better, two people's phone numbers off by heart. Because when you get locked out of your building and you know that your mum has a spare set of keys that you've left there for this exact scenario, you ring her. But of uh. course, because it's a random number, your mother doesn't pick up. So in cases like this, it's good to ring your sister, who is a big boss woman and answers the random numbers because she has to. And so I rang my sister because I remembered her number. I said, can you please call mum straight away, tell her to <laughs> come and rescue me because I'm freezing my ass off. I was in my slippers. I was in my just a, a little windsheeter. And I this sounds familiar. This sounds like the time I went to the like my sauna story <laughs> a few weeks ago. Anyway, I sat there with my bowl of fruit. Lucky mum only lives 15 minutes away, so she came and rescued me. But uh, yeah, that was not a great start to my day. See, that wouldn't have happened to me ever. Why is that? Because I'm from Reservoir, I'll just break oh. in, in two seconds. <laughs> I thought to myself, can I, can I jump up over my balcony? But then I thought, yeah, that's going to end in a broken leg. So I, uh, and the door, my balcony door was closed anyway because it was so cold. Yeah. Well, speaking of fuckery. Yeah. I know it's this just is like the, let, the fucker, let the fuckery rain, really. It just continued. It, the yeah, fuckery yeah. has not stopped since Sunday. Well, so this time in the last week, what I should say, by the way, just a um, little bit of housekeeping, just because of circumstances this week, we're forecasting early, so we don't know the team. So um, we will, in terms of the chit changes, um, we won't spend too much time on it, but they'll, they'll be speculative. Uh, but, yes, this the last forecast last week, we spoke about the game against Geelong having many branches and mm. those branches each represented a possibility and then I said there was another plant in the garden which was a cactus full of pricks that we needed to worry about which was the umpires talking and about uh, having a, a little re you know a little um what's it called ball um, a ball of crystal ball crystal ball that's hit parker now a yeah. crystal ball looking into the future you were well and again I'm not going to revisit that because I think we dealt with that nicely on the podcast. But what I will say is I wish the AFL's behaviour this week 
was as I no, I wish the horses I bet on were as predictable as the AFL was this week. You know, on Sunday, I had a, a, I had a little bet on two races, and it was the hurdles. Horses. And horses. Horses do, horses do hurdles. Yeah, you never horses heard of jumps, do jumps racing. Horses yeah. can't do hurdles. I think they people do, can do hurdles. They, they do hurdles, race. and they do a steeplechase. And the steeplechase, no, is you're bigger to jump over. People. Horses do not jump over things. They break their legs. It's well. It's funny you say that because the two, I had two bets, and both horses hit the hit the uh, hurdle, and um, so they lost the race. And one oh. got one. Unfortunately, had the screen pulled out, which is like the on-site, um, on-course knackery. So, um, oh, okay. Yeah. This is the, I have. I'm not even being funny here. I literally never heard i did not know that reminds me of like the circus making them do tricks that's ridiculous <laughs> well Only people jump over should be jumping over hurdles what what they what it does horses that would otherwise probably stop racing and maybe get sent to the knackery get to live a, a little bit longer because they get to race because often they're, they're oh, eight year well, old, how- nine year olds they get to race a bit longer because they go over the over the. How jump. generous! Oh, we won't kill you yet. Instead, yeah. we'll like we'll train you like circus animals, and you can jump yeah. over some. That's that's just that's awful. They, but they used to jump in. Set of circumstances. It's not awful if they win, and I bet on them. But anyway. Wow. Uh, Mind blown. Anyway, the yeah. Points. The points. I guess I'm making, is, in the podcast. <laughs> this, this is fucking hilarious. I said. You watch them try and gaslight us yep. by taking individual decisions and uh, claiming that those decisions in isolation and in isolation of all other decisions made right around the competition and the way they're interpreted at, at, the, at this current time, um, you watch them take those decisions and claim they were correct. And, of course, the AFL couldn't do it with the Draper and Menzi decisions because that was just too... Too far. Yeah. Yeah. Too far. So what they did is they firstly decided that there's been too much focus on umpiring. So um, the COO, what's her name again? Laura uh, Kane. Laura Kane. Suddenly is no longer going to come out and explain any contentious umpiring decisions. Uh, because there's been too much, too much focus on umpiring. I wonder why. Um. And then uh, the – but leaked through Brad Scott, and I'd be interested to know how complicit Brad was in this. Was, was Brad, did Brad agree to say, you know what, I'll release what you told us about these decisions? I think that's a question I find interesting. I know he's got a relationship there, having just come from there to Essendon um, two years ago. But by Brad Scott, we hear that, yeah, they conceded the two that were impossible to, to argue with, which was Draper and Menzi, but everything else was fine. So the narrative that they're trying to peddle is, well, the, there's only two goals, and given the, the margin, uh, it didn't make a difference. But they and also tried to peddle the narrative... That as fans and coaches and players, we don't know the rules. Did you hear Brad Scott try to explain to us that we actually don't know what the rule is? Like that's no, what they would, that well, he didn't actually say that. But the the, the AFL when they mm-hmm. talk talk to Brad were insisting that because Brad's saying no, the Ridley one. How is he like the whole point of you calling that before it gets to ground is to avoid the concussion, which. You backpedaled on three weeks ago and said there was going to be a change of interpretation, and the AFL have come have then come out now and said, "Oh no 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 no, you, the rule is actually that he's got one hand free, he's got to try and kick it." Hmm. So they're actually insinuating, in a very convoluted way, that we actually don't know the rules. We, as in Essendon, as in. The public. The, football, the public. The oh, oh, okay, of course. Of and course. so that's right. And so yeah. that's how they're trying to. So when you say gaslighting, you were there's that's the that's the 
legitimate for anyone who doesn't know what gaslighting is it's calling you crazy it's making you crazy and then calling you out for being crazy after they've made you crazy so mm -hmm. we're up in arms about these umpiring calls because the afl have said well no we're trying to protect the head so the umpires are going to call the whistle and call a ball up before the player has a has a chance to take the other player to ground and then we're like but you didn't call the ball you said that and then they say no 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 we said that but but the player has to have has to make an attempt. Yeah. So you, you don't understand. So you don't understand. So this is gaslighting. So if you ever want to – this will probably be in, in um, lecture halls, in psychology yeah. lecture rooms, this example. And if it's not, it should be because this is A1 a um, gaslighting of the general public. And then, to, to, and then to top it all off, did you know that uh, Princess Diana was also murdered uh, by accident? Did you know that? Did you know that I'm also prettier than Angelina Jolie? Did you know that pigs fly <laughs> as well? Did you know that to uh, the crust on bread gives you cancer? Well, if because you didn't know, you're wrong. <laughs> That's right. And did you yeah. also know that the umpire is in the best state it's ever been in? Am I yeah. blowing your mind with all these truths right now? But th that wasn't a troll <laughs> from, yeah. from Dylan. This is why I've, I've lumped them all in with shit. Like, I, it has to be. He can, like, he's taken, and I'm so glad that the wider public, including Robbo and fucking Jared, have mm. called him out and called him absolutely a lunatic for saying something like that like how dumb do you take people for well i look, I'm, I'm just repeating myself from previous podcasts but but i think it's due i think we of all weeks after what happened yeah and friend of the pod well listener of the pod scott actually um s summed it up the best it was it was it wasn't just a few bad umpiring calls it was umpiring umpiring calls in a concentrated in such a concentrated period of yeah. time which is the seven minutes which literally flabbergasted the playing group the fans the wider football mm. community it's not that they when they're separated and sp you know dispersed throughout a whole game it's tolerable because it's like oh we missed that one but then you probably get the next two calls right but yeah. this was a like two of the most obvious free kicks you know wrapped up in another two free kicks that you know mm. we all think mm. were there and it was just a concentrated period um that just was distressing to the players and and they couldn't they couldn't get it out of their heads they couldn't bounce back and as i tweeted i think yesterday or, or monday possibly you would think the AFL would, would look and say, what happened there? I suspect what happened, I, I was trying to rationalise it mm. and put myself in the umpire's shoes, mm -hmm. uh, which made me feel dirty. But yeah. I, I bathed in Dettol de <laughs> afterwards. But what I, I wonder whether they, they made one bad decision, heard the crowd scream, the yeah. players complain, and they're like, no, well, I'm not going to be swayed by by the crowd i'm not going to be swayed by players mm -hmm. and then they just went into this like zone of fuck you it's not um, a bad it's not a bad interpretation because they do a lot of work psychologically on not letting the crowd yeah have an impact on what they on what they do now that doesn't quite come to fruition up in perth as we know no. but um they do what that's part of their psychological kind of training when when umpiring is not letting the crowds especially the big the big four melbourne four who have big crowd bases who make a lot of fuss not yep. letting them impact their decision making so it's not a bad shout from you so then as i tweeted you just know rather than addressing what happened the afl have spent the entire monday morning you know from 8 a.m monday when they probably debrief for the weekend purely focusing on how are we going to manage this pr disaster yeah with the emphasis on pr because it's all they care about is public yep. relations and do you know why i think they're so focused on public relations there is no other sport in the world what well, sport of well, i won't say no other sport but of all the other major sports our game takes more revenue than any other sport and it, the revenue goes to the administrator doesn't go to the players, uh -huh. doesn't go to the clubs, like the Premier League. The Premier League's ran by the clubs um, in England. 
our administrator takes so much revenue and they do that to build their own empire, to feather their own nest, to give their mates jobs, to give their um, their fellow um, buddies uh, consulting gigs, um, giving Andrew Demetrio $300,000 or whatever it is to, to study the game in Darwin and work out how to, how to, how to roll out AFL there. But they... That's that's why they're so focused on optics, and that's why they gaslight us, and that's why they try and um, shit on our back and tell us it's a mudslide. You know, I came to kind of AFL obsession much later than a lot of others because you know I spent a lot of the early my early years, you know, with Barbies and so and so forth. But um, now you have to be, try and be objective, right? Do you recall getting this? this up in arms and and this attitude about umpiring being in such a bad state uh let's say 10 15 years ago was it in this bad state? now be objective try and remember back there was some bad calls i'm sure back then i'm sure but was it this bad like i was thinking about that and i don't i can't really have a say because i don't my kind of as i said my connection with with football only really started you know yeah in the 10 years ago, let's say. Yeah. So was mean, it? Look, my memory stretches back. Despite how young and sprightly I look, my memory stretches back a while. Now, I remember too No, but as a kid. No, but no, remember, no, no. as a kid, no, no, you're no, not. I, I remember this. I remember no, two um, umpires you, I think clearly. If you're, if you're, but if you're, if you're a ref, ref, ref if you're ref, oh my god, I just sound like I had a stutter. Then sorry. If you're referencing back for, to when you were a kid, I don't think you can, as a kid, remember. I, let, I'm building a narrative here. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I I, rem, I remember because I was a teen, two umpires. Very clearly, and I was obsessed with the game since since I was really young. And obviously, the the focus on the game is not what it used to be. All games are on a Saturday. Every single VFL game is on a Saturday, all played at the same time. You watched um, the replay Saturday night. You watched the replay Sunday morning, and you read the you read the, the Herald Sun through the week, and that was about it. Um, but that that aside, I have a very clear memory that there were umpires like um, Darren. Uh, I think his name was um, Glenn James. Glenn James was an Indigenous umpire. Very, very low key. Just, and he was famous for, he, he'd give a decision, he'd get abused, like sworn at, abused by the player, just smile, bounce the ball, or smile, give the free kick. It was not about umpires at all. And I don't know if it's because, look, the jobs got harder, that's for sure, because there's four of them. So there's but now. When you're in your 20s and 30s, do you remember coming away from watching well, no. and this is where three or really... four games yeah. and, and feeling like they were not fixed, but they were changed by umpiring decisions? Like no, well, the game's yeah. momentum was swung by umpiring decisions. Do you remember yeah. it being as bad as it is walking away back then to now? No, well, that, well, yeah, but that's what that's what I'm saying is like, of course, there were game there were games that were influenced okay, by so umpires. So it is as bad, but no, but not no. There were games that were influenced by umpires, but not as bad. Now there's four there's four umpires, and there's often two umpires adjudicating the one play, and the problem with that is that the umpire that gives the free kick, by definition, is going to trump the guy that doesn't give the free kick. So there's that complication. I think the four umpires, more games, that there's it's, – it's a, it's a more shallow pool of talent because you've got more of them out there. But, yeah, you're right. In no way has it been this bad ever. Mm. That it has not been this bad, and yeah. I've been watching for decades. And I remember, yeah, that was I my, remember the eighties, I remember the nineties, mm -hmm. I remember the noughties, and um, beyond. That was my thinking, like my reflection uh, this week so far is like I can't quite make that call, but I, I need to ask 
in the forecast if because what are we doing why are we and that was just getting a little bit deep but let's get deep how how got no changes how to it, talk about <laughs> yeah true how is it that we can accept we're accepting that a grand final grand finalists get there because they were potentially just on the lucky side of umpiring calls throughout the year like that is what we're looking at now we don't get four points and i'm telling you i still I, i'm even more sure that we would have won that game than i am of anything i really am that was in my eyes four points that we're not going to get and it could cost mm. us finals so that's from um, just umpiring interpretations so yeah, how yeah, is yeah. it that we accept like who was the team that collingwood beat was it against north melbourne yes with how that they were 50 mm. points down and then nick dacos didn't get a uh, the most obvious holding the ball in in the forward 50 for north melbourne yeah when that happened i thought to myself there's two umpires there and we just accept in inverted commas that he made a mistake but that cost north melbourne a game that's going to potentially put Collingwood in, for, in you know, lock spot for fourth. Like, how do we just go on and keep paying our money and accept with two umpires watching that particular play, watch Nick Dacos throw the ball after he has the prior and all that bullshit and doesn't make a genuine attempt to get rid of the ball, as obvious as can be. To, it wasn't even a tricky one. It wasn't even a difficult one. It was obvious to every person, even an NFL, um, NRL play, uh, fan could have seen mm. that it was holding the ball. But, yeah, we, we as spectators just accept. Yeah. That, oh, it's just a human error. How, how do we just continue to follow a sport where it's fixed like that? Well, that's why the AFL panics and that's why they're so concerned about the, the optics and that's why all they're focused on is PR this week. For that very reason, people are going to start switching off. And I, after Saturday, I didn't watch another game of footy. Who watches a lot of footy? I do. I didn't watch yeah. a game on Sunday. I couldn't bring myself to do it. And yeah. that for me is when I, when, especially like once I'd had my consults and stuff, that's my thing I look forward to on a Sunday in the afternoon. I just watch the rest of the footy. On the after in the afternoons, if I can, if I'm if I'm don't have deliveries, I did mm. not watch a single fucking minute of football. And for me, that is huge. It mm. put me off. I was so put off, um, and I, I just I, I question my my following of this sport. When you're not given a fair go, like as we said in the in the pod, sport is supposed to be fair. You're supposed to walk away knowing that okay, I wasn't good enough today. Not that oh. I was just unfortunately on the end of some umpiring. So why am I killing myself to play this sport and to kill myself to train and be the best player when I could lose just because of, an, of a mistake, an unfortunate, you know, series of mistakes? Well, that's the thing. It's not just what, like you can accept the one. It's unacceptable is what I'm yeah, saying. You can, like a decision in the last minute that costs you the game, you, you can kind of accept uh, to your point, the seven minutes of systemic cheating really is what mm. it was. Yeah, fixing mm -hmm. can't 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 be accepted. And I I reckon it, it talks a little bit to the culture of that of the AFL and the umpiring department. The umpires yeah. really do think do look down their nose at the rest of the footy public. And probably the footballers as well. You can hear it the way they talk to them. Yeah, it's true. It's it, so certainly smells, it smells fishy, doesn't it? You know yeah. how you can smell, like it kind of smells a bit at St Kilda at the moment. The vibe is, the mm. culture is off. Yep. Just the whole feeling and vibe and energy around the umpiring as a whole is fishy to me. There's a stench yep. this yep. year. And it just continues to, I'll be honest, I'm surprised there hasn't been a doping scandal brushed out from under the carpet this week just to take some some film off the umpiring. I'm surprised they haven't thrown really? a player under, <laughs> under the bus and said, oh, we've, a third third strike has been leaked. I'm shocked. Well, where's James Hurd at the moment? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What can we pin on his back? Yeah. No, that's a really good point. I, I'm shocked. I, I really am. I'm shocked they haven't raised, brought, brought up the racism thing again or some, some shit. Because well, I tell you what, it's it's just it's unacceptable, and and we continue as as 
another listener of the podcast, Sarah Sarah H, said, uh, you know, the the AFL are, are just taking advantage of our of our connection to the clubs, of our born into it. We're born into it, and they are just banking on the fact that we'll never leave because it's in our blood. Most of us were born mm. into it, and and we've been following it since we were kids. And they're just, that's what they guarantee on. That's what they, they, they don't care. They just know that no one's going to leave. That's what I hate. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I think you're going to find over time more and more people leave. But anyway. Uh, yeah, okay, that's can... enough, enough, uh, enough therapy. <laughs> I, I, I could talk about umpires for, for hours, but no, we'll, oh, no. we'll give the listeners a break. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, really? I think I think they'll enjoy being validated, to be honest, because I know I spoke to a lot of people, even a guy at the gym the gym today said, oh, why don't you have your Essendon um, towel with you? I said, mate, they've got to get washed. I've only got two. They're on rotation. Um, he thought it was because I was angry that we lost. I said, no, I'm not angry that we lost. I said, um, I don't mess with the rotation. You're talking to OCD person here. If it's not, if it's on the top of the pile, it gets picked no matter what happens, even after the Port Adelaide loss. Um but I said, no, I'm angry at the umpires. So any, we had a spiel, we had a long talk about it. So I think people will enjoy the validation of their feelings. Mm, I think so. Uh, yeah. I, I, but I, we can I, leave I, there I, for the <laughs> Yeah, we, we, look, and I thank everyone for their feedback. So I had some great feedback this week about the podcast. Uh, but anyway, um, really quickly, because this will be redundant very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, do you think they go with two Ruckman? In fact, you know what? That no. even no. even if they name the two ruckmen, that that question could still be there by Friday. That's true. <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, even if we were doing this tomorrow night and we had the changes, yeah. we're still under that cloud. Like, but in t- to yours, I think t- there's two guarantees. I'm gonna I'm gonna write put my name against. You ready? Mm-hmm. First is gold, no Goldstein, and the second is take it to the bank. Shield will play. Well. Uh... Jez was very effusive about uh, Shields' performance and how well he played. Do you have any mail, or is, are you basically? I don't have on... mail. Or this is just on my waters, in my waters. Okay. But I'm going to say this to Dylan. If you, Dylan, hmm. for for the first time in, this year, you've actually shown in the you show, and I know you've had injuries, so I don't want to be overly harsh, but you've been plodding away in the VFL, showing not much showing like completely disinterested in most of your games there. Last week was a step forward, and then over the weekend, you made a very big leap. Now, you need to come into the AFL, and you need to, with the same attitude, don't get come into this team and just think it's all going to be given to you. If you don't produce the same amount of work rate and willingness to exert yourself mm-hmm. defensively and support the team defensively, then I'm sorry, but I will write your ticket out of here. So I just want to say that to Dylan. Yeah, I, I would hope he's got some personal pride. I mean, I think he's got personal pride. Like, do you remember the song I wrote about him? I do. The greatest love of all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so he has personal pride, but this is about team pride now. Yeah, agree, agree. But mm-hmm. but but what I'm hoping is, and I don't know, he's going to be here beyond this year. Um. I would be hoping he would say, you know what, I've got an opportunity, mm. whatever happens from next from next season, to finish this contract where I've under underachieved, under delivered, not really paid my way to to make amends and to um, you know go out on a on a good note for what has been really an underwhelming um, number of years. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm rooting for him. I, I hope he does well, and um, I think uh, he's what we need. He's got a chance to do a Nick Hind. He's mm. got a chance to come into this team and play like he's fighting for his spot. Because guess what, Dylan, you are. And I'm but, so proud of Brad yeah. Scott for not, you know, having the temptation to just throw him in because things were going a bit wobbly at the, you know, in in the ones. Yeah. I'm so proud that he's stuck fat, but now Dylan's got the chance to do to play like his spot is on the line, mm. and to not, you know, we all know how good offensively he can be, but 
that's not how you build a great culture and great cohesion. It's about putting your head down without the ball and doing the work and supporting your mates because even Parrish was stepping to the plate on that mm -hmm. and he's been criticised for not coming to the party as well. So um, he's got that chance and, uh, look, I'd love for Hobbs to come in personally, but if it's to be Shiel instead, then I'm rooting for him to absolutely take, it with both, take the opportunity with both hands and refuse to be dropped now. Yep. He's so good that you cannot be dropped, Still, There's a difference between him and Nick Hind. Shield has talent. He has immense oh, talent. Come on. Is that a little harsh? Oh, Nick Hind? Yeah. No. <laughs> no talent, just hard work? Is that, what, is that where we would lay at his door? No. no, no. Dylan Shield has more talent than Nick Hind. Uh, more talent, yes. More inherent you said, talent you, than Nick You Hind. insinuated. You didn't say more. You just said has talent. I'm happy with insinuation too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I, I wrote a, I, yeah, I, I wrote a song. I reckon, I reckon you're too. getting closer and closer to an apology song required for old Nick Hine. If he has an, a good end to the year, I reckon that's what Oh, look, I'm loving it. I, I'm loving it. I would love it to be to Justin Bieber. Sorry. <laughs> Just putting in my request. A few players I could have... Um, it, well, you won't need one for Menzi at this at this point in time, so you can wipe that off. No, well, that's what I, and I, I was going to say. I think what will happen is Goldstein out. I agree. I think Menzi will come out as well, and I think Hobbs will come in for Menzi, and um, and Shield for for Goldstein. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, and no, got to get Kelly, got to get Kelly in there. King's coming in, no matter what. Um, and for me, that was for Menzi because he Menzi was in the back line. Yeah, I, well, maybe there's going to be more changes. I think Laverde should come out as well, given that there's no key forward for um, Collingwood. So, and here's the other thing I want to say. Here's the other thing I want to say mm. on that back line and being out of balance, and the reason why we don't, why laverdi has got to come out. It's not about his performance. It's about the fact that if we're going to be playing Ridley on Kerno, if we're going to be playing Ridley on Oscar Allen, like he we like we have been. What is the need for a second tall, for a second big big tall? There is no need. He is only there to support the second big to support Mackay. You need, the, a, you, you need another defender. But we're not playing him on the on the tall forwards. We're playing Ridley on the tall forwards, so he's not needed. Well, see, or what I would be doing is because I, I I think Levert's form is such that uh, it's I, I'd be getting rid of Redmond. He's done, he's done fucking nothing for a month. He has. I'd rather I... Rid, and I'd rather Ridley roaming around um, at a halfback and, and have less accountability. So give Laverde that. I'm just reading the tea leaves that the, that the club are putting out. I'm, I'm reading the pheromones that the club is putting out. And they're putting out that they're not getting rid of Red, that Redmond will never be dropped. And that Ridley is playing on the forwards, not Laverde. So... Yeah, I, if, I, if, if, if what you're doing is playing Ridley on the on a big key forward and not using your second tall defender, there is no need to disrupt the balance by having a second tall defender there. Now, if 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 you want, you should say that. Well, in that case, Laverty should stay in on form, and Mackay should be dropped because he's out of form. But then you leave a very very tall forward. On Laverde, uh, and no, that's no good. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. he's only he's only suffering because of of balance and the club and the club they just won't drop. See, I would, but I would, I would hope just just as Brad Scott has um, made Dylan Shield do his hard time, mm -hmm. I would hope that he, without fear of favour, would mm -hmm. um, would drop Redmond if he if he deserves to be dropped. But anyway, but we'll, we'll find out. Just, but doesn't it just make you think that maybe there's Red, Redmond's playing a role? That we don't know about, or else he would be dropped. Like Perkins, something tells me: is he playing a role that we don't know about? Is he making space? Is he is he being, you know, accountable on someone that we don't know about? Because she, he hasn't brought Sheila. What do your eyes he, tell you about Perkins, Fiona? You know, I've brought it up weeks ago, and I was poo pooed at it. Effort for me, it's always been effort. Uh, that willingness to. It's the you know the shield the parish the, the the two things that they were um, lacking 
before they came into a bit of maturity. It's that willingness to do the work without the ball, the two-way running, to support a teammate, to go pick up a teammate's opponent if you need to. As I said, it's instinctual for Caldwell and Durham. You see their, their minds tick into gear straight away. Perkins is three seconds behind, and by that time his opponent's gone and he's watching the play. Yeah. Um, yeah, I bet. I don't think either will be dropped. You're probably right. By the way, just uh, the Houdini Award. Um, if it goes as you think it will go, Draper is on thin ice. See, I don't know. I didn't think he had as bad a game. I know Jez, uh, uh, firstly, he, he originally gave the Henneman. Did you think he was that bad? I didn't think he was that bad. I re- No, but uh, if you're going to have one Ruckman... Yeah. I reckon Goldstein has um, has played a better game. He did. I didn't think Draper was that bad, though. Uh, so I, I, I'd be willing, personally, if we're going to go one Ruckman, I'd be willing to... Um, what do you say to the people uh, who are... Because you know what I would say to these people, but what do you say to these people, the ones who are saying, oh, I think two-metre Peter needs to be dropped? No, nah, they're on drugs. Thank you. My God, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm so glad you said that. I would have had to hang up this call. No, 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 no. Thank you so much. So would you bring Go- would you drop Goldstein and not and not bring Caddy in? Oh, that's the other thing too. Now we're now mm. we're speculating and speculating. I know we are, but that's not what, I, yeah, no, I'd, I'd be playing Caddy. I said this last week. I'd mm. be playing Caddy. I Caddy can take a mark in the forward line and he's good below his knees. I I'd be playing him, but um We'll see. Is Nick Cox going to come up? Apparently trained okay. Yeah, he was the – no, he didn't get injured. It was Harry Jones who had ice, who was subbed out, but he looks fine. Yeah, I meant oh, – sorry, I meant Harry Jones. I meant Harry, Harry Jones. Harry Jones, yeah, fine. Precautionary ice. It was fine. precautionary ice, maybe a little corky or something. Yeah, he'll All be right. fine, which leaves another conundrum because you can drop Goldstein, but do you bring in another ruck or do you go the smalls and you bring mm. in Shiel and Cal? Yeah. Or maybe you drop into Cox. Like, isn't, course, it, isn't it good to just get games into Cox? Like, oh, fuck me. Glad I'm not. It'd be, yeah, it'd be funny if we brought in, like, uh, we, we had a much smaller team this week when it's perfectly dry. Yeah, and then, it looks like and then Collingwood just took a heap of marks and uh, beat yeah, us that but way. You, but you know what? Then I would like to say to, you know, quit a selection. That everyone thinks that, you know, they're, they're the selectors and could do better than the actual selectors, mm. if you know more than we do. Then I could say, well, there you go. Which which option do you like better? Do you like being outplayed by <laughs> Collingwood taking 1,000, breaking the record for contested marks mm. and uncontested marks? Or would you like to go in too tall? Like, it's just you know, it's just a luck. You just you either get it right or you don't. Yeah, all right. Well, um, we spent way... <laughs> we're like three quarters of the way through the forecast. <laughs> and, right. um, We've got interesting things to say, Solution. Well, yeah, good, very good point. All right. Who's doing which today? You've got, the, you've got the smoking. Oh, really? You should be happy about uh, that. You don't, uh, have to, you don't have to pot a player. No, I, I, I don't know. I've got, no, I've got no problem potting a player. Yeah, uh, you should just permanently get the sitting, Joe. Oh, I think I'm going to... I'm going to put that in at the the feedback feedback form at the end of the year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you could just you know do what, the... You know where those feedback forms go <laughs> in the bin. Um, I think this one's easy. This one's really easy. It's got to be Zach Merritt. Oh. After God, last week, please, please, um, yeah. you'll look. He's allowed a bad, He's allowed one bad game. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. He hasn't had one a bad captain's game this year. I will say. Hasn't had a bad game this year. No, no. bad captain's no. game. I think he's been yeah. down in a few games, but he hasn't had a bad captain's game. No, it's a really good point. Week. Really yeah. good point. It, it was like he. It was like sort of the twenty-two-year-old Zach Merritt a little bit. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's good. Of... You know, I reckon it's the first time that's happened. Well, it is the first time it's happened to him as captain. Mm. So it was a good. As I said to you, many when Brad started, we have to have one of everything, one of every situation for them to have it. Learn from it, and then when it happens again, and same with Captain Zach. He, you know, he, along with the rest of his teammates, dropped the bundle. As captain, he's probably not allowed to do that. He's got to be the one to pick the bundle yep. up and then help the rest of them carry their bundles. 
a la Joel Salwood. That's exactly what Joel Salwood would have done. He would have said, I'm picking up my bundle, my sack, my my mind, which is on the ground, and I'm picking up all my teammates' minds on the ground, and I'm going to carry them on my shoulders until you're all composed, and then you can take your own sacks. And he did it time and time again. Yeah, also... Time and time again. Although that would never have happened to Joel Selwood because no man has had as many free kicks as Joel Selwood for um, dropping his knees and ducking. I won't hear a bad word against Joel, sorry. Um, I'll say but, many a bad word. But that's Zach's lesson to take from last week. And if that happens in a final or if that happens in a grand final, that is hopefully, a, you know, a situation where he'll be better prepared because he'll yep. go, no doubt, knowing him, he'll go back and he'll work and he'll 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 work on that part of his leadership. So that's a great, a great pick for the smoking Joe. So who are you potting? Who's going to be the sitting Joe? I'm I'm going to go really not obvious, and I'm going to say. Kelly. I'm going to go... <laughs> <laughs> that is not obvious as I could go, but no, I will never pot the king. No, no, I would pot the king if he was deserved, but he won't. He's never deserved. Um, he'll keep Bobby Hill. He'll keep Bobby Hill quiet. Don't you worry. He'll keep him, him. He doesn't have to worry about Jamie Elliott. Thank goodness for once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had him on Anzac Day and he did a beautiful job. Even I'll remind everyone, Jamie Elliott came out the next week and publicly said, I'm glad I don't have Jake Kelly on me this week. So um, just remind everybody of that when they're trying to drop him from the team. Um, no, I'm going to give it to, although I reckon a smoke and Joe could have also gone to Mackay because he needs to. Um mm-hmm. I'm dancing around the issue now, aren't I? Yep. Come on. Fuck. All right. I'm going to give it to Ridley. He's been down a little bit. Yeah. Can he go worse? Yeah, probably. Ooh. Yeah. Not going to rehash why he's been down because everyone knows my feelings on that. But, um, yeah, they uh, – but you know what? You know what solution? Even though that backline balance is still not right, it's the forward line. It's getting our forward entries right for a whole game. That's more the worry. Mm. Because so far, we're doing it for half a, ga- a, a quarter and a half against Carlton and against the Cats. Yeah. Going yeah. beautifully. Lowering our eyes. Martin streaming from the back line. Hitting targets. Jones with the beautiful marks and passes into the forward line. Nick Hind with the laser-like passes. Calders with mm. the la- And then all of a sudden... Andy McGrath, not so much. Yeah, it conveniently left him out of that. Although it's his 150 <laughs> and so we're screwed this week. Um, oh, no. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Oh, God. God help us. But we're doing it for... A, a, a quarter and a half, and then and then something's gone wrong. So yeah. it's more important for us to fix that up because, strangely, even though the backline balance has been off and we're letting way too many of the opposition's forward 50s actually penetrate, we're actually getting lots of entries into our forward line. So it's just that we're not converting because the entries are bad and they're just flinging back out. So yep. I just need them to discover why it's going well for a quarter and a half. And then it's falling to shit and we start long bombing it. And then we start blaming two meter Peter for not taking fucking miraculous marks when he's got three defenders on it. Yeah. 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 I need that to be fixed first, basically. Yep. Mm. But, but you're making Ridley the sitting Joe. I am. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I can see it happening. Uh, all right. Prediction. I, I know we're all of us who did the podcast, or well, three of us who did the podcast, yeah, were were quite negative. Um, are you feeling more positive now? Yeah, I am. Ooh. Stupid, yeah, stupidly and fucking like a fool, like an absolute dingbat. I am feeling more positive only because I've been reflecting on Collingwood's performance less than ours. I've been reflecting mm. more about them. They got down to 50 points, 52 points behind against the Kangaroos. That's a good point. Now, they're comeback kings. We know they finish strong. We know they do. But how do you get 52 points? You can't be travelling that good if you're getting, you're conceding mm. 52 points to the bottom of the ladder team. So that 
puts a bit, me in a bit more of a of a you know better state of mind. However, I'm still saying a loss, and I'm still going to say about thirteen points. So that's going to be pretty hard to take. Mm. What about you? I hadn't. I must admit, you've got me thinking because I probably in my head I'm just thinking Collingwood, mm. just like I thought Carlton, just like I thought. Even Geelong, I was more worried about the fact it's just Geelong rather yeah. than looking at their form. Mm. And I guess I was proven to be correct. But, yeah, I 20 points, Collingwood. Okay. Yeah, I think it's... Well, you've gone down from 40 because you did say 40. Yeah, no, I was feeling, I was feeling really... Yeah. I'm really negative right. after that game. But yeah. what will what'll be interesting to me is... Is this the umpire double bluff? Are they going to come out and be harsh against us again because they don't want to be seen to be reacting to what happened last week and, and all all of our complaining and everyone's complaining? And as you said earlier, apparently, well, according to Caroline Wilson, um, so take it with a grain of salt, but the, the meeting with the AFL didn't end well with Brad and uh, whoever he met or spoke to. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, don't write off the cactus. I think that's exactly what's going to happen, just to put it all out there. Oh, that's exactly what's going to happen. Don't think we're going to come out and get some favours mm. and get some apology-free apology, yep. uh, apology -free kicks. Uh-uh. We are, we are going to be adjudicated harsh. I, I, can, I can see lots of back pocket decisions Yep. Um, where we get, we get freeze in the back pocket and not much else. So the ledger still looks acceptable. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just like it yeah. did on Saturday. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. exactly what I think is going to happen. You nailed it. I was just about to say, people are probably thinking we're going to, you know, they're going to take it easy on us. Nah. Because then that's going to just, that's going to justify all our, you know, outrage. And they can't, they can't be having that. Yeah. And, and then, and then it'll be proof, you know, then they'll, They'll start, the journalists will come out and say, oh, see, we were right about Essendon. Well, the wobbles, you know? I, oh, can already see the, I can already see the headlines. Yeah. Um, you know? A million percent, million percent. And that's what pisses me off because that wasn't a wobbles game. That was a, okay, I mean, I guess you could technically say we we got the wobbles after the fuckery, but I don't I don't subscribe to that being one of the wobble games. Last year at the end of the year, the GWS game, the Collingwood game, yes, I think that was we got the wobbles and we dropped out of the eight. But I don't put that Geelong game to it. I put that down as being fixed. So let's see yeah. let's see the Collingwood game Friday night, how we perform, if we're still emotional about it. Because I know me as a fan, I still feel emotional about it. I'm not gonna lie, that's called being self-aware it's not called being petty it's called just being in touch with how you actually feel and i still feel emotional about it i still feel a little bit triggered hearing about football listening to football talk back not mm. that i do have done this week but it's, i'm still a bit triggered by it so uh let's see if the players and you know and oh, it, a part of me wouldn't be able to blame them you know because i feel triggered. Yeah, 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 i don't yeah, play yeah, i don't even play yeah. so can you and even like you've spoken about it and i agree with you about how our crowd noise and the way the way our crowd is can sort of um, filter onto the ground and permeate um, the game and the players. Uh, yeah, well, we'll be really nervy, and then a couple of decisions go against us, and suddenly we start howling. Yep, um, it's lit that is literally what's going to happen. And I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't for one second suggest the the crowd or the supporters to back off and to not be outraged and not support and not growl. <laughs> no, it'd be, just, it'd be ironic of me to do that. I'm just, and I won't stop doing it. I'm just yep. putting it out there that it actually does exacerbate the issue and it exacerbates it for the players. Yeah, because then they then they feel their minds start to race. And then, and then all of a sudden their heart's racing and then it happens and then a call happens again, again and again for seven minutes and the crowd's going crazy and they feel hard done by. So, And it's an away game yeah. and no one bays for free kicks like Collingwood. And whereas I think um, the umpires reacted negatively to our whinging and whining, mm. I think Collingwood, it's, it's different. It's squeaky wheel gets the oil. 
Yeah, it's so, so true. And you know that, like, you know what? All our the, the, our our growling will be drowned out by the chant, yeah. the calling. Or so maybe that's a good thing this week, so the players can't hear us. Yeah, know, growling. So that could be a blessing in disguise for once. All I can feel is a uh, a trip to the land of Sodom. And guess what? We've got uh, a whole weekend to feel the pain because Friday night football. Who likes Friday night football? Fucking hell. We it's like when the you win. of it. When we you like, win, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you could get your crystal ball out and just let me know how much, you know, Xanax I need to have on hand to get myself well, through the weekend. <laughs> on the bright side, you can follow Italy in the Euros. Oh, oops. Um, you can't do that either. Oh, geez. Ouch, let me just go get this icicle right. out of my yeah. heart that you just threw at me. That was mean. Sorry. That, that, was, do, that was so we do cold. A couch, should we do a couch question? How dare you? Yeah, I've got a couch question for you. Oh, why you got one is, for me. No, I don't. My my question is why is the solution so cold and awful <laughs> to me? Oh, That's my couch question. Yeah, I'm only joking, of course. Yeah, um, yeah right. You are. I, I'm lucky because... Uh, Is your team still yeah. in it? Well, my mum's English, but I, but I barrack against the English. Yeah, did they lose? Like, you like everybody else. No, they nearly did. They nearly lost. They were, so who are they you were, wanting to win? Uh, I'd like to see Spain win because the way they play. Or, or even Germany because um, of the way they play. I quite like the German team as well. Okay. Which, um, yeah... Who would have thought it would be going for Germany? But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it just makes me think of your Hitler call from, from the podcast. <laughs> that just makes me – that's one of the calls of, of the pods. Uh, if we do a, a, um, a best of at the end of the year, that's got to be in there. Yeah. Well, what was it? Oh, shit, an unfortunate event. Yeah. Yeah. I do think Brad, Hitler, Brad invading. Scott, <laughs> Hitler invading Poland. I do think Brad Scott was playing that down. All right. Have a question for you. You ready? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, we're getting through the backlog. Yes. I actually, oh, I found, so, I went back on the app and I found a few more, so maybe I'll wait to send them through. <laughs> You've got to, there might be people in dire need. That That's you, why I checked it, just in yeah. case. I don't think there were any dire need ones, though. No yeah. ghosts. No ghosts. Okay, good. If that person is listening, can you pretty please give me an update? Yeah. Just putting yeah. that out there again. No, I agree. All right. Um, so here's the question. Mm-hmm. Do people really do the laying on a couch thing in therapy or is that just on TV? Now, I must admit, I can't really remember many therapies being on TV, but there is the stereotype situation of the person laying on the couch and, you know, talking about their childhood it, um, I mean, I'm assuming they mean in like films where they're in a therapist's office in America. They do that a lot. Yeah. Like the person lies on a couch. Yeah, um, and then you look at look at like an ink thing, and you well, see the therapist. The see. whole point of that is the therapist is sitting behind, is sitting behind the is like at your head, so you can't actually see the therapist. That's the whole. Oh, really? Thing. Yeah, yeah. That's the psychology to it. Um, so you're not reading the body language of the therapist. You're not reading um, the oh, face of the you're therapist. Not reacting, not reacting yeah. to their they're reaction. Shocked. To they're their reaction. Well, that, but you're not reacting to, yeah, their uh, – and you're not reacting to the energy they're emitting as well, you know. Um, and also, I guess, a comfort. I, I think they would say it's a comfort thing. But in Australia, I, I dare say it's still done in America, definitely definitely because they're you know all dramatic and shit um but i dare say it's not done it's not done here no i wouldn't think it's done here because i uh, to be honest i don't think you can connect personally you can't connect unless you're uh looking at somebody and you know looking them in the eye and um Mm. i think personally i think that's the one it's the most important relationship you could possibly have in your life when you're healing and that is with um your psychologist or your counselor or your mentor um and a connection is you know at the top of the list um when it comes to building a trustworthy relationship and Mm. um yeah i just don't think you can build that unless you're face to face with that person um so yeah i uh i guess i'm not helping that's more of a 
question uh, uh, well, help but yeah, yeah. If you're wor- i guess if you're worried that that's what happens in therapy in australia no it doesn't so don't worry if you're wanting to start therapy that's not what happens yeah i don't think it happens either and the, the reasoning i'm giving is if you've got a firm a practice i should say of therapists and you've got a you've got to have a long bed like couch in every single office you're probably going to need about 20 30 percent office space extra so it's going to be too much of a facilities cost it's going to eat into your profit margin oh, look at you looking into the, <laughs> looking into the, how much it's going to cost really the, caring, pe- caring the, about the, people. yeah the logistics of it rather yeah. than the actual yeah, <laughs> okay well too yin much and of yang a here. facilities footprint footprint <laughs> yes oh yin God. and yang Great. wow um yeah it's interesting it's I, I have no doubt though it would still happen in america like just to be all fucking flashy it would still happen because okay. i'm pretty sure i've watched i've watched series and and um like recent recent movies that still portray that okay bed type cou- not bed couch and um therapist yeah sitting in a chair have you ever or did you ever watch that show idiot abroad no nah. with carl pilkington no nah. okay um you should watch it, but there is one episode where he's he's a northern Englishman. He's from Manchester, and he's not very he's not very cuddly. He's very um, blunt, and he goes to this special therapy where everyone gets into pajamas and cuddles each other. <laughs> oh my god! He what strangers not... with strangers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cuddles oh. with strangers, and and you know you hug you hug each other and that's how you get a connection he does not that sounds yeah, like a natural therapy that sounds like a um when you go off to a retreat some yeah. uber retreat some and, and that, green type that's right and you yeah. and they make you drink you know tomato juice and uh and you hug hug therapy hug, hug yeah. the person next to you you know like that's what that reminds me of yeah yeah it's pretty fu- it's pretty funny but anyway yeah. um sorry i don't know that was much helpful yeah, no, that's, yeah. If you're if you're worried that that's what's happening, it's not. So take the leap, find find, go to your doctor. You just go get a referral. Say you want a referral to a psychologist. You'll get 10, 10 rebated sessions a year. Um, don't get me started. Should be way more. If we did that, and if we put everybody in therapy, you wouldn't need to put money to police and to crime and to lawyers and to courtrooms and to rehabilitation and you wouldn't have to worry because this shit wouldn't happen in the first place but don't start me on that as i said mm. um but don't worry get get to therapy find a good therapist and if the first one is not right you just keep looking if you don't feel that connection if you don't feel it you just keep looking they're not the therapist for you and maybe if you see a couch run away i would yep yeah. yep that's a good uh, that's a, uh, uh, in fact just to finish on this topic i would suggest that if your therapist is making you sit on a couch i would find a new one i think it's mm. a bad sign personally and i would see that as a really really disconnected uh way to to try and i would see that more as like a getting money money making rather than actually a desire to help you so run in the opposite direction and that's from the segment titled fiona's couch exactly so you know i'm getting sponsored by amart here no i'm joking i'm not um we're not getting sponsored at all but yeah run from the couch if unless it's fiona's couch (laughs) all right well on that note um i think we'll end it there uh friday night collingwood yeah Uh, it's the old ptsd again and you know what this is the game where it's like all right they're falling off a cliff a la last year this will be the game that if we lose, that's going to be the headline. They're going the same way as last year. Yeah, but much will depend on how we lose. And if it's another 40 point plus 50 point sort of. So, so how, what's the margin that you think that, atti- that that attitude and those headlines don't happen? What's the margin we lose by to make that not happen? Hmm. It's going to, if we lose, it's going to happen anyway. It's going to be. It's going to be the, the difference between the slide or the cliff. If we lose by 15 points, we lose by 22 points, it's Bombers sliding. Okay. If we lose by 50... Um, so 30 or more, you would say? Yeah, it's maybe, maybe doomsday, 30 or more. Doomsday, probably, yeah. yeah, 30 or more and it'll be 
Bombers have fallen off a cliff. It's all over. Um, Bombers so, won't yeah. make finals. Yeah. Because yep. yep. it's the start of the fall, you know? Correct. And then we'll, we'll yeah. you know, kick Melbourne into form next week. And that's another Saturday yeah. night, I think, at the MCG. And But you, you've definitely turned me around about Collingwood, Fiona, and it, it's a point I'd not even considered. But you're right. They, they've not been in great form. So maybe, you know, maybe it'll be a shit off and, uh, <laughs> You know, we could win by one point in a very low-scoring, ugly game. Imagine if we drew again. That'd be some fucked-up shit. Uh, how many draws have there been this year? I think Three. four already. Four already, yeah. It's been a draw-heavy heavy season already. And, and don't they just love that? Isn't that coincidental? What a, what a coincidence that it's all drawn and and it's tight to to one to thirteen. Isn't that coincidence? But but let's ignore the fact that the umpiring's atrocious. So long as it's a quality on the on the ladder. Oh, when you never been the better. Ladder. Never been better. Oh, most sorry. Even, even, oh. The, most even season ever. That's the game's in no, a no, wonderful so, state. You're, you're right. The, qual- the my bad. The umpiring has never been better. Yeah. Sorry, I got that wrong. Oh my god. The commentators are wonderful. <laughs> Uh, anyway. Look, you have to admit they listened a little bit because they got Maddie Hill, you know, doing. They got Jason Bennett doing, you know. They've they've been able to cull bloody McLaughlin and and you know Ling from a lot of them. So they are culling them slowly. They're just yeah, yeah it's a slow process. It's way too slow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a slow process. But 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 I will we're give them that at least. Sorry, I was just, I was going to say we're waiting for Dwayne Russell to die. It's it's it seems. For yeah. Him to go. Oh, look, I need Jared. What's his face to go first? The special comments guy, the old guy. Healy. Jared yes. Healy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he, he's 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 an old man, stomping his feet that someone put dog shit in his bin. Like that's that's the vibe, and he needs to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hates. Uh... He hates life. He sounds yeah, like he yeah, hates. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hundred percent. Obviously, his dick stopped working. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. That. Oh my God, the Viagra is just not kill, kick, kicking it. No. Um. So uh, they need to send him to Zachary. Yeah. We should do a commentator, Zachary. With respect. <laughs> With respect. But yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, on that note, thanks to everyone that listened. Check Thank out something guys. about Cake, our sponsor. Uh game friday so hopefully we you know pull off a big surprise and make us happy for the rest of the weekend and we'll do the podcast so we'll speak to you then and go bombers Bye. 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 Bye.